we knew that uh, someday that when we have a, a disaster or natural disaster or any kind of a, unexpected uh, events in our lives, um, that's why um, working from remotely, remote office uh, uh, has been always part of our plan. And that's why uh, something like this happened, we, it just does not throw us off. We usually continue to work like we function like in an office or uh, a client environment, okay? All right, so far, so good. Um, I apologize, those of you that link, I sent link, unfortunately it didn't work. I'm gonna do that again before I start. That way we can take our time and continue to build our shopping cart. All right, so I'm going to uh, modify this. What is the edit? The edit button, unfortunately, yep, that's right here. We're gonna grab this and boom. And now we can get out of there easily. Okay, good. So I have a couple of mouses here. I don't know which one I'm gonna be using. Here. Excellent. All right, guys. So uh, now we can go ahead and continue uh, working our working process. Uh, up, uh, one second. Uh, I got kicked out. A session get kicked me out. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is open up my index uh, .php and this, let's take a look at it. See what uh, what we did last time and where we left off. By looking at the code, uh, looks like we had this session. Um, we are using the product that PHP and um, all right. So I just wanna, um, for your information, I just wanna let you know that in this <coughs> um, work session, I'm not too much putting on, I'm not putting too much uh, emphasis on the security at the moment. Uh, so I'm not using the, um, like uh, any kind of, a, um, like a filter or functionality to prevent the SQL injections at the moment. Just want to let you know out there, um, or any kind of a prepared statement for my SQL database, SQL server, or for, uh, for my SQL statements. Okay. So as you can see, that's why everything is poor, uh, because my intention is not so much uh, I will, but I will have a separate tutorial, a video tutorial for security, how to secure your, your SQL, how to secure your front end, your back end, uh, your API, all that stuff. So we'll talk about security uh, in other some uh, sessions. So this uh, first part of the, our session right now is kind of a catching up with what we did last time. So kind of reminding our, ourselves uh, to catch up with uh, the process. So, so far, so let me just bring it up. Okay, so this is uh, um, these are the list of items that coming from a database. Let me show you that. This is coming from uh, local host. I believe I use this um, my IT education that US. Okay, and the uh, products table is right here. And these are the products table, okay? And let me see. So the item number one is MacBook Pro, which is right here. And then $1,000 and uh, there are five of them. So let's change the price. Uh, price, uh, let's say drop. Um, what I like to do is sometimes uh, there are some items out there that uh, mer merchants, like uh, they usually, decrease the price, they drop the price uh, for many reasons. It could be because of a uh, promotion, it could be because of they're not able to sell them uh, in timely fashion uh, because of the, uh, or some type of a marketing plan uh, campaign. So, or maybe there's something going on with coupons, something like that, it could be any reason. So, so what we need to do is we need to create another uh, column 
uh, in the product table uh, as far as like the drop price. Okay, so original price and drop price. So let's do that. And then uh, what's gonna happen in the product price, then we have to say, hey, this is a, uh, we have to put the original price and then we're gonna cross it out. And then we gotta put the, the decreased price, the current price right now. And then we have to put some type of sticker on it and say you are saving uh, 10%, 25% uh, if there is a pain, uh, like a saving. Okay, so let's continue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alter my table. Uh, it's called products table. Yeah, I can do a couple of ways. Either I can use my uh, command or this, but easiest way, all you gotta do is just click on the structure. And then right here, you can just duplicate the field and you can just say price drop. Price drop. Now, price drop, either you can calculate by percentage or the price itself. So if we're using the calculation, uh, let's say that uh, this is a price drop and uh, for the $1,000 one, uh, let's say I'm dropping, uh, let's say 10%, okay, 10% and everything else null. Now for the null, uh, usually price drop uh, zero, zero percent, right? So zero percent by default, it basically means there's nothing there. Now, what I'm gonna do is uh, price drop. So I'm gonna come back here. I will just say update. And then we say product set price drop uh, and then uh, equal to zero, all of them, on all of them. So, because if you see, there's nothing here, all null. So what I did was I replaced them with zero. Now I can just easily add 10% here. Okay, but going forward, anytime I create a new one by default, I don't have to do that because by default it adds zero, zero percent. So that means any, any new item uh, going forward we create, uh, it adds zero percent. Okay, now let's continue. Let's say MacBook Pro is a, a price drop uh, 10% and let's calculate that. We're gonna come back to our, uh, our index.php, that's what we are displaying. Now, there are two ways of doing this. One, you can uh, directly calculate these in your SQL statement. So let's, let me show you, uh, see if we can do that on, um, by using this uh, SQL, which is a structured query language. The first thing I'm gonna do, delete all that, so select, select from product. So let's bring them all. And only thing I'm interested in right now is um, ID of the product, uh, price of the product and the price drop. That's all for now. I don't care about everything else, okay? So, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna see if I can create a, a simple mathematics, like basic algorithm or something like that. So it's just kind of a, hey, uh, how do I calculate the percentage of stuff? Now, uh, let's make that a little bit better, make it nice. So in this case, I'm gonna call this as P, as means as an alias. So I create an alias called P for product because it's easy for me, basically, if I do that, in case um, if you want to uh, join multiple tables, alias comes very handy uh, for multiple reasons. For example, you might end up having tables with the long name and you don't want to write uh, every time like long underscore name dot some column name, you can just say long name as LN, long name or L or whatever, just a short, boom, boom. It's efficiency, uh, it's actually, it's good for, for you when it comes to um, writing complicated SQL queries. Uh, in my case, I didn't have to, but I just wanted to show you guys that you can do this way too. 
Now, let's calculate. Uh, so let's say if I want to, um, uh, well, let me just go back since I'm working only one table. So we all know that this is a product. So I don't have to do that. At least now you know there's a possibility. Now, let's say if I want to create a uh, uh, price, okay, and then I'm going to multiply it to price drop, drop, and then we're going to uh, what? Uh, we're going to divide to 100, and then um, let's go ahead and calculate that, okay? And then we can save this as, as a discount. Okay, let's see if that's gonna happen. And if I go ahead, refresh. So as you can see, uh, the discount of 10% is $100. So if I go ahead, change this to 1.3, uh, let's say 13.6, I just wanna mix it up, okay? Uh, as you can see, automatically it is uh, calculating. See that? Auto. Uh, what about the 3% of uh, 300? That's $9. That's pretty good. Uh, and um, yeah, that's how it is. Okay. So as you can see, uh, we are calculating a discount. Now you might say, okay, so what about uh, the ultimate price, right? Which is the final price. Then you're going to come back here. Um, unfortunately, my SQL version I have installed 5.5 does not support this if i say uh discount minus actually it's the other way around so you're gonna detect the uh, discount from the price discount right it doesn't but i just want i still want to show you why the price minus discount and you can say as final price uh, let's see so it discount is not finding it it's not it's not been it hasn't been declared and that's why this one is supported in the new version which i don't have that i only have 5.5 but after today's session i will invest some time into upgrading my database and hopefully going forward uh we will catch up with the latest okay good everything okay so far guys now this doesn't necessarily mean that I don't have any options. Uh, unfortunately, uh, only thing I can do is just by copying these guys. I know it's a lot of code, but at least we have some options, okay? Now, what I can do, I can grab these. I can say price minus, and then this would be the final. Now, as you can see, final price is $900. So, um, price 1000 Price drop 10%, it shows the discount, and then the final price $900. And then we're gonna be putting this $100 as a sticker. It's basically like, hey, take a look at it. Uh, this has a price drop. And then people will be like, oh my God, this is a, a great option. I wanna save money, you know? Okay, so that's one of the options. And uh, definitely I'm gonna be adding those back. Uh, let's go add everything else. Okay, and as you can see, those ones that additional ones I added, since I put the wild card, you guys know already that by now that what the wild card is, right? So, all right, we'll just leave it the way it is. And then all I can do is grab this guy, go back to my uh, products tables, and then I will just have to, uh, put them right in here, see that? Uh, and then I'll put the where clause, we say product, uh, I believe is a, let me just check it. Was that a quantity? Yes. So quantity, quantity greater than zero. Oops, sorry, uh, I put two, two, two columns. All right, so which basically means, um, as you can see, is a quantity. I don't want to bring up uh, any items. 
I don't want to bring up any items um, which we don't have it. So any items quantity equals zero, which we don't have it, all right? Okay, so that's why I don't want to bring it up. And that's basically it. Now, if I refresh, if everything goes successfully, okay, everything went just fine. All I have to do is now, I have to put the discount, which is, uh, find a discount kind of a sticker or uh, find that. Um, someone type in, can you put it on mute please? Unless you have a question. Okay, so let's say I wanna Everybody can hear me okay, right? All right, so what I'm looking for is uh, some type of discount. Uh, let's see. Label, make sure it's kind of an empty. Oh, there we go. Maybe this one works too. Maybe I can find something. Okay, so let's see. Um, I want it with no background, which, which means the transparent. And eventually, maybe this looks good. Okay, so this is fine. I guess uh, we may probably gonna use that one. So we're gonna copy image address for now. Uh, like I said, I just wanna let you know that uh, copying from Google or from other uh, images uh, against the copyrights, uh, but for the educational purposes, I just want to let you know that uh, I'm using it to, to teach you. But otherwise, uh, I want you to know uh, copying or using some other people's work. Uh, it is a subject to plagiarism laws, uh, uh, copyrights laws. Uh, so in case if you use it for uh, commercial purposes or for other purposes that brings you uh, like revenue, uh, you might probably get in uh, get yourself in the trouble with the law. So I just want to explain it up there, okay? But for this purpose, uh, we're just fine because this is educational uh, live session. Okay, uh, go to index. Uh, what I like to do is I like to put that a little, this kind of a um, discount sticker on those items uh, that is being offered some type of discount, some type of promotional, just like what we saw on uh, um, an example. Okay. Uh, so, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Kimbo? Yeah, no, Rabik. Ah, Rabik. Wa alaikum assalam. Yasun assalam. All right, thanks for joining. All right, so we're going to continue. Masadamus, I got Karadigan Bursak. We are the Allah Jibusa Manashi price in all the Kuisak Madam Chatroil Philip, products price what I can. Should products price in it, Manashi Yonege, Allah Jibusa, Shun Kuwasak, the Prugander. Can you think of Div Kalamas there? Brinchina Batta, you get this the class there. Let's call them discount. Okay, price drop class. Okay, price drop class. If you are here, just pause it. Just for the minimum on on dollar, we can on percent, we can do promise. Can you remember what I said? We can just not bring an effect for that. Well, but that's okay. But that's what we're going to be fixing. Okay, that's fine. Now, I will do a little bit of work with the CSS. Uh, where is my okay price drop right here? And um, our CSS is down here. We guys know already. Classes are called with the dots and the IDs are called with pound sign, okay? Now, um, we going to uh, display this as an uh, in blo inline block, okay? And we're gonna have a width of, how big could it be? 100 pixel. And I wanna bring down uh, background image. 
And let's see, what is my background image? It is right here. That's background image. And uh, let me just get the height as well. Uh, let's say 80, 80 pixel, yeah, 80, um, 80 pixel. I think 80 pixel is too small, but we'll find out. And then I wanna put the background size 100 by 100. And I want the background not to be. And uh, let's find out what happened here. Okay, um, so this may be a little too big or something, but we're gonna find out. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna put a position to my price drop label is the position relative. And then um, I guess we're gonna have to do the left. Let's add a 50 pixel to the left and to top probably we're gonna leave there for now. Okay, which is fine. This is perfectly fine. Only thing we're gonna be adding is pretty much everything is fine here. Uh, let's move the text somewhere in the center. And I want to do the line height uh, since it is 100. So let's give a 80 pixel. All right, so that puts right in there where it's supposed to be. And um, oh, another thing we forgot is for to adding this dollar sign to our price. Anything that has a price has to be dollar sign next to it or before. So make sure that don't forget that. Uh, let's see quantity and that's it. So when I refresh, oh, okay. okay, so that's a dollar sign, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, so those little coupons or uh, discount labels right here, uh, they're supposed to show only for those that has a, a discount, right? For those that have a discount. Um, since we are satisfied, what we have, what we decide, are we gonna put the, uh, the price drop or should we put the discount? Um, I don't know, but I do have both. As you can see, I have a discount. I also have the final price. We can try both, but uh, let's put a discount. Let's put a discount, okay? And discount would be, we're gonna grab this and then all you gotta do is just copy one of these. And if you go back to um, discount right here, and you just say discount. Now pay attention. Uh, we're gonna have to round up this, uh, some numbers here. It's gonna be like long. Not gonna look pretty, look at that. Okay, now, do we use the price drop or do we use, um, yeah, we should use the price drop, definitely. I don't wanna use the discount, I wanna use the price drop. So that way, price drop. Okay. So, uh, and we shouldn't forget about the percentage next to it because that's what the uh, price drop means, right? This how long, how much price drop. Okay. I want to um, add a little bit of width to our uh, label. So I'm gonna make this 120 pixel, I think. Yeah, it's kind of looks fat, I don't know. It's too much, right? Under 10. Uh, this eight, eight or five pixels, fine. All right, I just need to, just a little bit of room for me to display my numbers. And the uh, top, let's add the top uh, 10 pixel. None of that's gonna help me a lot. Actually, it has to be all the way around, I'm sorry. Uh, there has to be uh, minus 10 pixel. Yeah. 
uh, and the left would be 40. So we're gonna move it towards the number. All right, there we go. Oh, is it maybe a little bit closer? Uh, 25 perhaps, that helps. Yeah, this is fine. So only thing I have to do now, uh, add my condition. And uh, what would be my condition? Is uh, if price drop is greater than zero, then that's the only time you will be displaying that, right? So then we're gonna just go in here. And this is where uh, we're gonna be putting our conditions. Okay, so for that, we're gonna just say if, um, I just got a PHP, if price drop, copy this right here, greater than zero, okay? And then uh, put the double colon, it, it works like a um, curly bracket. And then you come back here, is a PHP and if. Um, just wanna, for, for your own information, I just wanna let you know that um, if, in the short code in PHP, you don't have to do this. You can just do a, uh, you know, opening bracket right here. Uh, it's like a less than greater sign and plus the question mark. Uh, you can do that. Uh, but just remember that it might not work in all versions. Uh, especially on Windows, uh, you might have a different versions. And the latest one, like uh, the 7.2, 7.3, all of them work just fine. But if you have a 7.0 or maybe perhaps older version of PHP, like 5.6, this might not work. So that's why I'm putting this. Just want to make sure that it's a backward compatible. Does that make sense to you guys? All right. Now, what I did was I put a condition. <clears throat> it's basically my condition says, if the price drop from the table is greater than zero, which is I only show these items and don't worry, er, don't worry about those zero because who cares about those? I only wanna show those ones that have the discount offering. So let's see, yep. And that exactly is happening. So these headphones are 3% 3, 3 off and uh, we are definitely giving them that discount. Or at least like we're letting know that, hey, these are the items are, uh, are sold a uh, cheaper price, which is 10% off. Holiday price, like, you know, like Christmas, uh, New Year, whatever, or the Thanksgiving. <clears throat> okay, I think we're good here. Everything is fine. And that's what exactly I wanted to show you guys that uh, if there is a a discount then you can add it here. Next, uh, if I wanna add five items of these, and I pay attention, the, the total number of products in my shopping cart, not shopping cart, my product table is number five, which is five. I only have five MacBook Pros, but then if you pay attention, I'm purchasing all of them, all right? So what's gonna happen is, if I go ahead and add that, oh, not sure why it's not working. So let me just go, oh, it is working, but it's a, it's a delay. What's gonna happen is this is fine. Now, when I come back, this is my shopping cart. When I go ahead and check out, after I make the payment successfully, whether it's PayPal or credit card or whatever, what I need to do is I need to go back and make the update the, uh, the product table column, which is called uh, quantity to zero, all right? So for example, let's imagine that we have finished this checkout process and, and that person basically bought these five. So, and then we're gonna come back. I'll do that manually right now. So let's say that we don't have that anymore. We only have zero. And then when I come back, it's gone. So that should be gone or or what I was thinking uh, is great sold out, sold out label, and then we need to hang it there. So I think it's the best. That way it's kind of a showing that, oh my goodness, things are going, uh, uh, getting sold out so fast here. So maybe kind of psychological kind of a attack maybe to people. I don't know. Uh, 
it's almost like, oh, you know, I better buy something because they're, you know, selling stuff so fast. Okay. Um, I apologize. When I'm in the zone, I forget. Uh, so those of you who just joined, thank you very much for joining. Keep watching. If you want to see what I'm doing, like I said, uh, in the YouTube, uh, not YouTube, in the Facebook, in the comment section, I have a YouTube address, which is the URL for my channel. Go ahead. Uh, uh, switch to the YouTube and I'll see you there. Now, so let me add that uh, little addition. Uh, for that, I am going to remove this quantity greater than zero. Now watch. Uh, but I need to order this. Uh, for now, we're going to do it like the manually. I'm going to order by uh, ID and the descendant order, which is the new one that's going to come in. Uh, in the beginning, or actually, you know what? Gives me a second idea. So we may want to order it by price. The highest price is going to go on top. Okay. So now the most expensive one, for some reason, is the base. Now, what else I like to do is those ones, uh, those items that are already sold out, uh, we'd like to put uh, some type of a sticker somewhere let's say we're going to cover this action so that they can check check out okay now i'm going to come back to index which is the last the column right here action column uh line number 35 which is the header and scroll down i'm talking about this section right here okay now here's what i'm going to do I want to add uh, exactly the same uh, condition right over here. And then I'm going to just copy and paste and then make sure the indentation is correct. You don't have to. PHP is very uh, comfortable, you know, uh, loose language. It's not too strict about uh, your know, indentations or format. It doesn't matter. Or you really, uh, kind of picky about your code, you can use this one as well, which PHP Storm offers uh, off, you know, right off the box. Uh, only thing I have to do now is just say quantity. Quantity is greater than zero, then go ahead, uh, display the shopping, which is a checkout process. And then in this case, uh, let's add the PHP else statement. And then I'm gonna add my div class uh, we'll just put, uh, what do they call the shopping cart? Price drop. So we're going to call this sold out label. And then uh, I can just put, you know what? I can just put, use the image. Why not? Why not, right? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but this is good too. Oh, can you see this one right here? The small one. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave up to you guys, whatever the image you want to use, uh, feel free, okay? So it's fine. This is fine. Copy image address. And uh, I really don't have to use the diff. Uh, would be nice from uh, front end design perspective. Uh, that way you get the control. Uh, it looks more professional, but for now, uh, let's stick to uh, the old fashioned way, which is to just use the image. And we display the image right here. And then I call this class uh, sold out label. And then I'm gonna grab this and design it a little bit better. So uh, I will probably copy most of the stuff here that I have and then remove those things that I'll need. I really don't need this one. Uh, that one is fine. I don't need that. I don't need this. I don't need that. Position relative. I may, I may not, but let's just go without it for now and everything else is fine. Okay, and now let's go. Refresh. You'll see that everything is gonna be showing up right now. Most of like zero ones. Okay, yep, there we go. So now we know that this is sold out. Uh, anything else sold out? No, but it's artificial create one. Now, 
You know, a couple of things. If you are mentioning the height or width, you don't, if you mention one of them, it should be enough and uh, it'll automatically adjust because you don't want to compress your image and it's going to look kind of awful, right? So you don't want to do that. What you do is if you give a, a fixed value for the width and height will adjust it automatically, then you don't have to mention unless you really want to put it into a certain format. All right, this is too big for me. Uh, I want to decrease the size of the image just a little bit uh, so that my table looks, looks kind of out of whack. Yeah, 100 probably good. So what was that before? Mm, 100 pixel, right? Let me see. Um, what is a second, what in my, my table IMG? My table IMG, oh, wait a second. Uh, this is what's going on here. My table IMG, do I have that my table IMG? Got it. So what is basically happening is, Sold out, okay, got you. So what it what basically means is we have to override it with a couple of ways uh, because in a table level, which is a TD level, as you can see, I have this, uh, my table IMG, which is by table. Uh, you know, in the, in the development, in, especially in front end, there's a hierarchy. It's like a parent and ch children relationship. In the parent level, uh, I set the width 150 uh, fixed uh, value, which is 150 pixel width. And uh, in the child level, I'm trying to override it basically. Hey, it's saying like, I'm your father, uh, you have to listen to me. But uh, in the development world, ch a child has a right to override father's uh, value, which is by importance. And that's what is going on here. Uh, it's just basically uh, you're taking uh, an emphasis and putting on child with uh, putting that emphasis or focus on that particular uh, functionality, which is width. Okay, and that's what's happening. <clears throat> uh, let me just test uh, YouTube here. All right, I'm getting requests. Uh, John, I can come out with which other translations as well. I'm the after. You get that? Who English Shirush Udbik Chadabolade, Alash the Balash Gapraman, Harakat Kalaman, Chinchushka, Udishadem, English Shadem. Okay? Hamasadem, uh, I can't jump because Hargal jumped to Nima, a man in the man routine the position in the king, Hyolam Buzalad, and after that, I may not be able to show you guys the best stuff. So I will do my best. Okay? Thank you. Uh, Domi Thomas? In the Namaklet Rodic. Now, if I have the Namaklet Rodic, Boo Bold, can it be fixed to test Calamus? That's what the QA process comes into role. We are developers, you guys know already that we should be good at debugging, testing, and the QAing our work before we send to uh, off to uh, the QA department, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I will come back and say this number two item, let's say we don't have that anymore, we'll sold out basically. So now when I come back, that should be gone as soon as this refreshes. All right, it didn't go. Oh, it did not update. What is it? I'm, I did update. Let me see. Samsung Galaxy Zero, but it says zero, right? Okay. What about Nokia? Let me just go back by price. All right, so uh, 1.3 out right here. So zero, and then this is also zero. All right, both of them sold out, as you can see. Zero, zero, nothing left. That means you cannot check out, see? But you do have an option to check out those ones. I think this may be good for a business. You know what I mean? That way you have right, um, you have, a, uh, you have a basically options to uh, filter out. You can use our sort uh, filtering option where you say, hey, you know what, I don't, I don't care about those ones uh, you don't have in the storage or warehouse or those items not ready for sale. I only care about 
uh, those ones that I can purchase right now. Okay. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the shopping cart now. So far, it makes sense, right? Now, um, in here, what we did so far, open up the checkout and let's see. I'm gonna say reset. What reset does is basically it cleans out, it resets it and sends you back to uh, the you know front page, which is uh, the shopping page. So that like, you can continue to shop. Okay, click on, uh, let's add uh, this $1,200 iPhone 11 Max Pro. You know, sometimes, I'm not sure if it's something with the click or let me just double check on that. See, when I click it every time, you should see a call to back in, which is I'm using the API. See, I'm uh, so give me give me a second. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh it. And let's go back to uh, reset everything. And I'll show you that call, okay? All right. Are you ready? Just keep your eyes in here and XHR. And you should see a call coming in very shortly as soon as I click on that button. Okay. There we go. There's one right here. Uh, if you click, it says zero. Okay. So, oh, all right. So we, we have to do some uh, adjustment. I know what is going on here. So let's go ahead and start over. Click again. And uh, open it up, and now it added one. So if you click on that, you see see one. So if I add one more, then you should see another one. And then you should see two. It basically keeps track of those items that uh, you added. Now go back. Uh, unfortunately, I only have one here. So unless I refresh it, uh, -uh. it did not work for me, that's what we're gonna be fixing. So let's go back again, uh, add, 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 maybe three times. Not good, go back. And we're gonna go back to the back end and find out what we are doing. All right, so get the products at the cart. All right, so let me go back to a uh, shopping cart and see what we have here. All right, so these are the ones we added. So I'm gonna empty out my shopping cart. So we're gonna do the uh, truncate. Uh, you guys know the truncate already, right? So what's the difference between truncate and delete? Um, uh, you guys know that truncate basically uh, removes the value content and uh, resets the uh, the index and the uh, the what's the name incrementing ID numbers back to zero, and the delete only does the delete the content. Okay, so let's say that I want to click on. Let's go to refresh. Click, click. Oh, hang on a second. Click, click. Okay. And when I go back to my database and refresh, now pay attention, I'm only adding one. The quantity is not changing. So let me go back again. So if I add the same item, let's refresh. Let's refresh. And then I'm going to go back to front end again. So let's add one this. And let's see now. Okay. And now if I go back and uh, see the result, all right, that worked. Now, if I want to add the same item, Oh, 
you add it too fast. All right, see, quantity is not being updated. But when I come back, neither is my checkout page. It's supposed to be changing to, um, uh, I'm supposed to update my uh, product quantity. So let's find out and troubleshoot why. Okay, so this is our uh, construct. In the construct, we're establishing the database, as you can see, and uh, we are generating our shopping cart quantity, uh, which is the total of uh, items in our shopping cart. And then we are getting this product details and then adding to cart. Let's see what the adding cart is going on here. And yes, that's what's supposed to happen. It is basically, we are updating the quantity by product. So why it is not happening? Do we have uh, somewhere a condition? Somewhere we have a condition. Okay. Ugh. See, as a developer, you have to be prepared. You don't always develop a new stuff. Most of your time, you are busy. Uh, troubleshooting, troubleshooting errors, troubleshooting problems, issues, uh, brainstorming, uh, working on the maintenance, working on upgrades. So you don't always develop stuff. If you have a misconception about uh, uh, being a developer or the role of a developer, I just want to let you know that you don't always develop stuff. Most of, most of the time, you might be busy just working with the old legacy code or maybe the code somebody already left before you. So, all right. Or in this case, um, you develop a little bit and most of the time you'll be busy with troubleshooting stuff, which is fine. That's, we, we have to do it, right? That's part of our, our responsibilities. Now, what I am doing is I am troubleshooting is this portion right here. So that means when I call the back end, which is right there, uh, all I want to do is I want to spit out, um, I want to spit out the SQL and let's exit out. I can just put the water down, which is fine. So that you guys know that water down is your, is your best friend. Now, when I come back, I will make sure I open up my inspect element, uh, this call. Now, when I come back and click on it, I need to see what am I getting back? So I'm getting the shopping. Oh, wait a second. Quantity equal one. That's what keeps setting up. I got you, see? That's one of the uh, kind of a ways to troubleshoot things because as you can see, my quantity is, is one. Hmm, we don't wanna do that. So then you're gonna say, oh, I see now the word. Yep, that's me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and work now, I got it. I got it. I refresh it. Let's go back. Truncate the shopping table, the shopping cart table. And refresh one more time. And then I come back to here, reset. Now watch. If I add one, and if I add three of them, okay? And if I add five of them, See nine item, and then when I come back, voila, now that works, got it. Okay, so that's what's going on right now. I will get to it in a minute. So um, those of you on the Facebook, like I said, um, 
who just joined recently, go ahead, log into YouTube. Guys, YouTube. Uh, I might not see some of your questions. I apologize, but everything's happening on YouTube, guys. So on Facebook, this is something uh, just showing you guys, okay? Um, Ulam John Umarov, he asked question. Assalamu alaikum. Urgandish Uchun, C sharp, Yoki Python, Kaibiri, Universal, the Yoki Pillar. Ulam John. Ulam John, Michael SDM, Shagaman, C sharp DM, E Python DM, Masaki Masahatan, Ikelasem was in a Funksas was in Ornobar, C sharp DM was Gerish and Masabar, Shlutomonium Bar, Zayat Samonium Bar. In the I guess it's Hazard Zomona, your Hazard get trend, which about the Gamosangas, Python, book Hazard Inchlu, Python, Hazard Market, Yani Ish Namasa, I did a cook a demand that Julian Pro Ish, so Hala Ochilk, Yimmy Gimma Python, you will get Hazard. Okay, Python, 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 Kobusha Hola, data mining, artificial intelligence, Hafal, Malabana Shashmuk. Katori PHP is a PHP bo bo web programming language. Pakat website lamang nasa diyan plan. A Python website niyan kolor ada. I bosh kuno mayan kolor ada. General scripting language. Ano desktop lamang nasa diyan mukto nga kaka do hapon. Okay. So since all is there, job bo C sharp tan kore Python niya kolor. Aga chan kolor sa ni. Ah sa kini, nakin ikalas niya all para ganto zero sa ugyan niya mas ba. Okay. Bolder sa all is job bolder. بول خواهند لرگی من امشب هم از یافته. ولی که مسلمان، ولی که مسلمان. نیروی ابدشکر و نیروی خان سلام سعی هم. هم لرگی سلام. از اول اگر مسئله دیگه تو بیارد، از وقتی که سلام علیکم لرگی بسیم، هم لرگی. آبشی سلام دیدم. کاریم نخواستم هم من. شان از یلداش و سعی هم سلام. ولی که مسلمان. بول دوامی تامس. که الان یه نفر امیش متوجه شد حالا که شنا فاید لانه لیده حتی اب من اب اشتران خویش که این وجه اشتر مسکوب یه نگه نمیده وجه بالکن من مقصدم خدا خالص آخریت بارگیم بوده منش نمیام بوده شاپن کردم بوده خانه کدوم بود کریدیت کرد تولش میچند ایستی اول کویش منم چی کوبرا پیپال بوده که رک آه اول مهاز ام لوکینگ ات دیفرنت آپشنز اف ای کن Integrate this with a different type. And PayPal is the easiest one right now, but we'll see. Like I said, there are other options. American Express. Uh, there's a uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, shopping, shopping cart, payment gateways. Uh, let's look at a couple of them actually, since we are talking about it. So right here, and uh, shopping cart payment gateways. Okay, what? Great. What a way to, to get uh, to get into like a spam stuff, huh? All right, give me a second. Um, maybe this one, Blue Pay is another one. Why is that misleading? Why is that? Why can't you just like be honest with your uh, suggestions okay apply block uh, merchant I apply now what is this what are we having there with shopping cart okay there we go magento uh revolutionary sky in which uh woocommerce is another one uh this one is very popular with the working with the wordpress plugin this is uh it's easy and it's not cheap it's not uh, free um 3d card is another one uh, let's see let's look at a couple of ones Couple in other ones here. I'm just very surprised that I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, PayPal here. But anyhow, um, yeah, most like the PayPal. I think because I have a PayPal account, uh, I can log in easily. Do that. So let's go ahead. Click on the check out now. And let's get that working. We said it's working. Check out. Now, uh, before I do that, 
when we check out, one thing I want to go ahead and establish right now is the mailing process. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, for that, I'm going to come back. Where is my backend? Uh, and then database, empty shopping cart, what's good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this. Let's just copy and paste. And then we'll call this, uh, no, 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 shipping, mailing, or whatever you guys want to call it, like mail, maybe. Mailing. Mailing is fine. Let's just call mail. All right, let's stay uh, with the mail, and then we're going to come back to say mail. Uh, I'll just grab and delete everything else. One in the database. Maybe yes. Uh, what else do I need? I do need uh, require once. And uh, one thing I want to bring over is the uh, the my mail that PHP and then put it into backend. Okay, and then all I have to do is just say my mail that PHP. Now, what I want to do. I want to say protected. Oh, let's go with private now this time. Uh, you know what? I'll go with just mail. Mail. Okay. And then I'm going to say the uh, mail. Oh, sorry. This. Sometimes I forget that I'm in the uh, class. My IT that email right here. Okay. Very good. Use my T edu. Um, let's go ahead test it now. Uh, for now, I will just put um, Tashmatov at yahoo.com. And here I'm going to put the subject, is like uh, your invoice or checkout items. Okay. Uh, let me just check what we are expecting here. So shopping time back at mail. Let's grab this. Okay, so we are adding the message as well. So this one is going to be thank you for shopping. Shopping at let's say my ITDU uh, online store. Okay, and yeah, and then um, I will come back here, object equal new uh, mail, and then right here I'll just say um, object mail. So. What I want to do, I will uh, create a public function and send email right here. I don't want to automatically fire up the email uh, function because that's not a good idea. Okay, so right here. Uh, only time I'm going to fire up the email function is when I call this uh, public method called sent email. Does that make sense? Uh, or I can just customize this. Uh, I can just say to, I can just say subject, I can just say message, I can just say message like that. And then I can copy all of that, dollar sign to, dollar sign subject, dollar sign MSG. Um, then I can just copy this right here. So John Pashmato, you know what? Why not just copy this? Why am I doing? What am I doing? All I have to do is this, this, and it's easy, right? There we go. <laughs> Uh, that's it. So let me go ahead, test, test this, and see if this is working. I hope it works because um, unless there's some other problems, uh, it might not cost us our time. Okay.
Let me come back to checkout. I'm gonna hook it up to uh, checkout for now, just for testing. And we'll do this one do at a time, okay? Go to the checkout and scroll down and find our script. Okay, good. And then we're gonna have to give some ID for our checkout. Where is the checkout? It, which is right over here. Check out shopping cart right here. And we do have that in here. Let's close this guy. Uh, I'll just put it here. I'm gonna copy this guy. And if you open it up, I sure you want to uh, check out instead of check out. I sure you want to check out, right? And then uh, we are going to be firing up. Uh, where is that mail? That mail. Mail. And I want to make sure that I am sending something back to the front end. So we can just say uh, mail, email has been sent successfully or sent, whatever. We don't know the error message yet, but we'll find out. Check out and shopping cart. So in this case, I will be updating this guy right here. And then you can say something like, uh, user has been updated in the email. Okay, it's time to test. Okay. Um, you know what, what else I wanna do is, I wanna just put the console here and uh, let's show what we are getting back. And this is it. Refresh this guy, inspect elements, gonna go to the console. And we're gonna test our mail. So I hope, I mean, fingers crossed, sometimes it might not, it may not, not, okay? But either way, we will fix that. So click, are you sure you want to? Okay, it says the require vendor auto load, fail to open, no such file directory. I kind of thought ah, it didn't matter, but let me see if we can create simulation here. Uh, what is basically complaining about is uh, not able to connect these uh, two files. Um, and that's what's happening right now is um, the checkout, uh, I'm sorry, the mail.php, my mail.php is trying to connect to that and it's causing a problem because we moved the file from where it was to somewhere else. Besides, uh, look at this. And I call this my mail. So let me change that as well. And that's what's called troubleshooting guys. So my IT EDU mail. Hopefully this will match the class. There we go. That becomes nicely adjusted. And next thing I wanna do is I will change that as well. There we go. And this is also gonna change. So 
So let's say my it edu. There we go. It edu. We fixed the one problem, but it's not completely fixed yet. All of them. Okay, the problem still exists, which is uh, trying to reference those two files in my IT edu right here. Now, in order to connect back to the vendor, and let's see the vendor is right here. So I am inside of a tutorials. Oh boy, so I have to jump like so many times, or I can just mention the, the root right here. So let's see if that's gonna work, uh, hopefully. Well, otherwise I'm gonna have to like dot dot slash dot dot slash, you know. It's not very pleasant, but we have to do it. Mm -mm. Not a chance. Let's figure it out. We're trying to get the auto load, right? Okay, that is what it is. Dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash, and if I do the vendor, yes, and then if I do the auto load, yes, at least we got something. Now do the same thing with the database. So dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash int yes, and database yes. I hope this will fix the problem. If not, I don't know, but uh, we'll put that on our uh, to do list because we may not have enough time to troubleshoot all that. And you gotta expect that something like that happens. Okay, so which is good. That is a very promising uh, error. I've never been glad to see something like this. So that, that means sometimes some errors better than other errors, okay? Some errors like you don't wanna see and some errors like, oh, I'm glad I see something different error. You never see any developers seeing the error like being happy, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that comes with the passion. So what it basically means, hey, what are you doing, John? You already declared or you already uh, called this database twice. You already called it somewhere and then now you're calling again? How dare you, right? That's what it's trying to say. Now, let me just go back to my mail and figure it out. It looks like that I'm calling here. Is that what's happening? So let me close it. Sometimes it can be very, very, Frustrating. All right, so right here. So what are you doing here? You shouldn't be calling because you already have that. Let's forget about this. Completely forget about this. All right, uh, that's good. Now I'm gonna come back and refresh it. And let's try, click. And not declare where is the problem coming from? Check out 96. Check out nine. Oh, right over here. Check out 96. And the check out 96 coming from what shopping cart? Got it. So that is happening. Mail. It's in my mail. I need to go to tutorial. And then I need to get rid of this database thing. And that's not. Oh my goodness, that is a problem because what it's trying to do is it's connecting to the database and yeah, that will be a problem, guys. That will be a problem. Yeah. Cannot declare the class database because the name is already in use. Database 5, 96, check out 96. Check out 96. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, and that's uh, that's the case. Take one minute. Since we have the production uh, uh, database kind of a conflict, 
this may probably gonna be taking a little longer. So I'll probably look into it uh, until next our study session. Uh, we're kind of running out of time for now, but overall, I wanted to kind of uh, reach out all of you uh, with the message. As you can see, um, now you see what the developers, what the software engineers we do uh, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so now let me take a few minutes of my time and answer uh, very generally most frequently asked questions. A lot of you out there, either you are familiar with the IT work, uh, a lot of you out there might not, and some of you very interested in getting into IT, trying to switch your career, and you, you know, you, you've been aware of what has been happening to the world as far as like uh, ability to be a mobile, uh, ability to work from uh, remote locations, uh, not necessarily going to work in office, right? Uh, so one of the advantages that IT is offering is that it's, a, it's working from remote office or from home. Uh, so anywhere you have access to internet. Now, that certainly it's a privilege, but at the same time, it requires or brings lots of responsibilities. Uh, disadvantage of working from home, I like to say that uh, because I don't want you to think of that like, hey, working from home is always the fun thing, or you know, you can do whatever you want and stuff. But unfortunately, uh, the expectations is going to be higher when you work from home because clients and the boss and everyone else, project managers, they expect a little bit more uh, off of you, a little bit more productivity than when you were in office, okay? Why? Because first of all, you are decreasing the, the time of the, for, for the commute in the morning and going back. So let's say like, I personally, when I was working in Manhattan, I was, my commute was basically an hour and a half to two hours in the morning and coming back usually about an and a half, an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So that's, we're looking at the four hours every single day, four hours, okay? And that on top of the eight to nine hours, depending sometimes, maybe eight, nine hours someday. So nine hours plus four, now do your math, 13 hours all day. Now, when you work from home, uh, you have to take that uh, out of the equation now. So do you see what I'm talking about? Now they expect you not eight hours, nine hours. Now you're gonna have to work a little longer. So, and another disadvantage is you might not have, if you are a entry level position, if you are like a less experienced position or specialist, or you're just getting into the IT, working from home in the beginning, it's gonna be not very easy or fun stuff because you don't have someone, you know, a sick, uh, uh, some type of help from. You can't ask around because when you're office, you have like a coworkers, uh, you, have, uh, you have your manager, you have your client or anyone. Uh, you can just say, you know, like, hey, I'm having a problem. Can you help me? Can you help, you know, with this and with that? So that's no problem. But when you work from home, it's gonna be hard unless, I know you have a channel, uh, you have a way to get a, you know, your question answered. But it's in the beginning, it's gonna be a uh, little tough. Um, and like I said, both options have uh, advantages and disadvantages, okay? Now, I've been asked a lot of questions about which programming language uh, that you should choose. Um, it depends. My question is, it depends. There are a lot of you out there uh, who are strongly interested in starting the IT career or just want to learn, you want to get into it eventually, right? And some of you are asking, uh, number one is what the programming language I need to pick up and how long it's going to take for me to become a hands-on. And also, uh, and the, the most frequently asked question is how much I'm going to be making uh, once I got my first job or once I get my, uh, once, once I get my uh, foot uh, in the door. Uh, again, uh, all of my answers start with the, it depends. Regardless, I always 
start my answer with it depends. Of course, I mean, if you look at it logically, it depends on many factors. Uh, like for example, depends on the company size, depends on uh, how fast you are, how well you do in the job interviews. Uh, and another thing is your negotiation skills, right? Even if you do so well in, um, in the job interview, and if you don't negotiate well on your salary, on your package, forget about it. Don't be fooled for empty promises like, hey, um, why don't you just start working for us? And then later after 90 days or 60 days, whatever, uh, we're going to give you promotions or we're going to give you a bonus and stuff. That's sometimes a bull crap. Unless you get it all that on the paper. On the paper. But they will, they will find some type of an excuse. Trust me. Uh, some companies, they, they, they basically buy into that. That agreement is always a legal agreement. Unless, like I said, uh, if the company says, I, I was, when I was a hiring manager, uh, I've, I've seen, I experienced firsthand. Sometimes your client, your boss says, uh, they put you some, uh, put you under pressure and say, hey, just hire this guy. And after three months and four months, you just kind of let him go. Or uh, we'll, give you, we'll give him max 20%. Now we'll just give him 10%. But then you, you go, to the candidate, you promise them, it's like, hey, you're going to get 20%. That's kind of a practices being happening uh, some places. So, again, I don't want to get distracted. Going back to a real question, all right? Uh, what is this good at? Uh, sorry about that. Sorry, I just got charged by GoDaddy $221. Some domains probably have to do that. Um, yes, that's what it is, guys. Um, we're going to continue uh, answering the questions. Uh, uh, your answer, uh, your, your question was, uh, uh, what programming language? Uh, I think, like I said, for the web, why am I pushing this web so fast? Uh, like, so, you know, I don't know, uh, popularly. Because it's easy to learn and getting into uh, getting the getting your first job. That's why. So if you try to learn a Java, it'll take a long time, longer time. All right. So uh, PHP and Python is the easiest. And remember, software development, like especially web development, uh, it's very very broad. You got a front end, you got a back end. If you want to learn all of that, six months or a year is not enough. Six months is only for one side. If you want to become a, a very good with the front end, yeah, six months probably good. But if you want to learn and the front end, and the back end, and Linux, and SQL, and everything, no, the answer is no. You you will have a basic understanding. You will have, uh, you know, yeah, you might do okay in a job interview, but you're not going to rock the interview because six months is nothing. People go for colleges, like they're getting degrees for four years, four to five years. And even if after they graduate, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna get that best job. I wanna be honest to everyone out there. You're not gonna, even if you get a college degree, it doesn't necessarily mean, I can get to do one thing. I'm gonna prepare a student here at my, my education for six months, one side, like say front end, for example, or the back end. I'm gonna pick the one, uh, line right and then i'm going to pick someone who recently graduated from college degree with a computer science degree and let's do some type of a uh, competition like a code challenge let's see who's going to win i'm thinking about setting up this kind of a event uh, sometimes this or maybe next month depending on uh, how far uh, you know how far this quarantine is how long like or how long it's going to last Okay, so that would be interesting thing to see, right? You want to see a, a candidate who has recently graduated from uh, American University College with a computer science degree, and then someone who, well, which I don't have right now, but um, I'm going to pick one and I'm going to prepare that, get that person. And next six months, nothing but programming, coding, boom, 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 and then we'll see. And I'll give them assignments. We're going to give them three tasks. One database, one Linux, and we're going to give them uh, one project, mini project. Let's say four hours for both of them. And let's see who's going to win. 
Then I can tell you. All right. Then I can tell you which one is what. Uh, that's it. Now, salary wise, uh, go to salary.com or any other websites that offers you a uh, salary kind of a statistics. But I can tell you right now, um, I've been getting lots of emails. Uh, as a consultant, uh, entry levels, mid levels, you can get $60, $65 an hour. Uh, the max they can do if you're willing to relocate, like Boston, Massachusetts uh, area. Um, what else? Uh, some other states, like outside of New York, uh, they can, I can get you like $70, $75 an hour, but uh, that would be too much bargain. Uh, but even if you get a $60, $65 an hour, or if you make $500 a day uh, working eight to nine hours every day and then uh, taking the Saturday and Sunday off, I mean, come on, do your math. That's $10,000, right? So that's not bad at all. For the entry level, ten thousand a month. I think that's great. All right. I hope we, we accomplished uh, some good stuff today. Uh, I really appreciate everyone joining. Unless you guys have any questions, I will be uh, closing everything here and then. Let's see. Let's close it. Close it. All the windows. uh yeah guys all of you on the facebook on youtube uh always pleasure to see everyone uh sorry if i i was not able to uh, pay attention to your questions and stuff but feel free to reach out to us uh by the way we have a, a telegram uh, group as well uh i have my assistants uh my student uh enthusiasts uh they're ready to answer all of your questions they are awesome i'm blessed uh with, with such people, I'm surrounded with the wonderful people. Uh, they are very enthused about IT, enthused about helping out others uh, since I am helping and they're also helping others as well. So that's kind of a legacy we'd like to leave, okay? And I, again, um, stay safe out there. Uh, all of you, if you are not following the social uh, distancing rules, stay home rules. Again, uh, just be patient a little bit longer uh, not much left, maybe three, two weeks, maybe months, even if it's like two months, it's not bad at all. Just staying home. is not a bad thing. Uh, you just have to find a hobby. Again, if you're really bored, come on, join us online. Like I said, that's what I'm doing. I'm working extra, uh, for you guys. So that, uh, try to keep the youth, keep the, everyone out there, uh, kind of interested in, in something other than what's going on in your house. Uh, it can be depressing seeing people like every day, same person every day. And I, I know that it's not first day is fine. Second day is fine. But then after weeks, two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. You might say, like, oh, John, I don't, I don't agree with you and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, trust me, give it time. Some people will know in a week. Some people will know two weeks. Some people will know. Someday you'll be like, oh, you're right. <laughs> all right. Uh, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. God bless all of you. God bless your families and stay safe. Uh, I am uh, very glad to see again. My name is John Parshmatov uh, and I'm going to be signing off and I'll see you guys next week. Remember, we're going to continue. This is a uh, very exciting. Okay. So thank you. And uh, with that message, I'm signing off. Okay. Thank you.